Hello, my name is Eric Newman. I'm an Applications Engineer in Keysight's Design and Engineering Software Sales Organization. Today I'm going to share a brief video with you showing you how we can use the new features in ADS 2021, particularly the new features associated with our RF Pro EM simulation tool, to quickly extract an EM model of an analog devices evaluation board, the ADTR 1107 well, before we get started, some might ask, well, what is RF Pro? Well, so if you're not familiar with RF Pro, this is a new feature. It was added a few years back into the advanced design system. It's an EM tool. It allows you to take your layout from ADS and launch it into the RF Pro user interface and allow the common users to set up an EM simulation without having to think about some of the more complicated expert settings that are involved in other EM simulation tools. We will share additional resources at the end if you'd like to learn more about VARF Pro or see some other demos related to RF Pro. In our brief demo today, we will highlight some of the latest advances in RF Pro that were delivered in our ADS 2021 latest release. We'll take advantage of mesh domain optimization and our generation two meshing to help speed up our simulations. We'll be using some virtual pins to improve our port grounding and we'll do a net-based extraction to focus on the area of interest that we are trying to capture an EM model. There's several other advances that have been delivered in the latest release and encourage you to download the latest release and check out the new features that are captured in the slide and check out the resources again at the end if you want more. This slide highlights the agenda for the demonstration I'm about to run. Rather than going through the slide, slides are boring. Let's go straight to the demo. Okay, to get started, I've opened the latest version of ADS 2021, and I've created a new workspace, given it a sensible name. I like to order these in terms of the date so that they show up chronologically into my workspace folder. And when creating the workspace, I chose to not set up the technology. So if you look at the technology setup, you'll see that we don't have any units defined, we have the typical ADS schematic layers as a reference library, but we don't have um, the database for the board or anything brought in here. So what we'll do is go to File, Import, Design, and we're going to use the Allegro BRD file format, and we'll browse to the location of the eval board of interest, in this case, the ADTR 1107. We'll click OK. After a very short period of time, we can see that the board imported completely with no errors or warnings. Click OK. It's important to note that I have uh, the Cadence Allegro software installed on my machine. I don't have it licensed, but what that allows is the tool to use the extractor module that uh, is included with the Cadence installation, which is needed to bring that board artwork over into ADS. But now you can see we have the full layout brought over into ADS. We do now have our technology definitions. You can see the layers here have been added um, for the board design. We have the substrate definition included. Um, we can check the material properties. In this case, we're using a Rogers 4350 material, 10 mil thick, thin laminate. Um, this whole design sits on top of a, a heat sink. Uh, to provide good ground and heat sinking below. Um, so this is a very simple kind of two-layer board. It's nice for running a quick EM simulation. Okay, to launch this board into an RF Pro simulation, we simply go to the Tools menu and say New, RF Pro Setup. You can give it a different name. We'll go off the default. If you had multiple substrates, you could choose other substrates that you might want to explore. Hit OK. And now we can see the ADI eval board in the RF Pro GUI environment. You can go to a wireframe model. We can expand the z-axis so we can explore things a little more easily here. See all the vias? Go back to a, a top view here. What we're going to do is a net-based extraction first. We'll go ahead and open up our nets, and we can see these unnamed nets here. We will take these nets and we will assign them a role of being a signal net. Now you can see they show up in yellow. Highlight nets, you can turn on the different ones. We usually have the ground plane turned off, as well as the undefined nets. 
Um, now that we've converted those to signal nets, we can easily view these, click on these, and see which nets we're getting ready to simulate. Okay, so we're interested in these four traces below. We really don't want this uh, through line just at this time yet, so we'll go ahead and just select the traces below and ignore that top line. Okay, so now that we've selected these nets and the associated traces, we can right-click and say Add to Analysis, or we can simply take these and drag them down into the nets portion in here. Okay, so we see we have some nets, we have some warnings. Um, we'd likely want to have a ground net in here as well, so we have to define our ground return. So I'm going to drag a ground down into our net portion of the analysis as well. So now we have a ground, we have these nets, we can go back in here, select these nets, and just go ahead and say create ports or component groups. And it'll find that, okay, we have a ground, so we're going to use that as our ground return, and we have the different instance names um, for the different nets here that we're trying to simulate. Click OK. We see now we have a valid analysis. We're basically ready to run a simulation. But let's first take a look at our ports. We'll make sure they're happy ports. OK, um, I can see the ground return on these ports near the chip are finding a ground very close um, to the positive pin on the top layer, which makes good sense. Um, I can see on the edge traces here, um, the tool was smart enough to realize that the um, ground return on the L2 or bottom layer here was closer than any grounds that would be available at the top. So it actually selected more of a microstrip port definition here. We can explore that later with virtual pins and consider a ground signal ground on the top layer. Well, it looks like we got most of the ports, but I can see over here the transmit input port somehow is missed. We could go back to the uh, ADS layout and deliberately add a pin here to make sure it gets picked off. Um, but what's even easier here is the capability to use virtual pins. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a virtual pin. I'm going to come down in here. I'm going to drop a pin down on the metal where the pin connector is going to connect, roughly these coordinates here. I'll go ahead and say apply, done. And you can see up in here we have a, a virtual pin now. It knows what net it's connected to. It's given itself some name. We could edit this name if we like. I'm going to go ahead and say TXN. I'm going to say TXN+. Plus. Okay, so we get the idea of that. What else do we want? We want a ground pin, probably directly below it. To do so, we can right-click on the virtual pin and say, create virtual pin at same XY on. Let's go down, and we will place that on the etch bottom directly below. Okay, so now we have these two pins. Again, I'll rename this something a little more intelligent, TXN minus. All right, so now that we have these two virtual pins, we can use those to create a port. Okay, so what we do is we can go ahead and select these two pins, and we simply drag them down into the ports portion of the analysis. And you can see now that pin has been set up. We have its negative return being applied to the bottom side of the board and its top on the top side of the board. I actually have it upside down right now. Anyway, so now we're actually readily ready to run a simulation. And we can just hit run, but before we do so, we're going to do a few things here. Well, we want to set our frequency range. We're going to simulate this board to 20 gigahertz. Um, we want to set that in our frequency plan here. We could turn on field storage, um, especially considering we're going to go to an FEM simulation. We're going to run FEM on this board. You can go to this advanced um, simulation setup menu, and this is where we can access some of the new meshing algorithm technology, our Gen 2 meshing helps speed things up, as well as our mesh domain optimization, which is going to you know, mesh the interesting parts of the board around the nets of interest and, uh, and, and mesh less in the other areas of the board. Okay, and one last thing we'll change here is we're going to use the direct matrix solve for the matrix solve method. I find it to be a little bit more robust and sometimes even faster on these larger size boards. Click done. Go into the resources. We're going to simulate onto our local host, but guess what? The cloud's coming. You can also simulate to the cloud. We'll save that for another video. Anyways, click done and run. And I'm going to go grab my coffee break. Well, that simulation went pretty quick. Only took a little bit over five minutes. My coffee is still very hot. Anyways, so we have some results. Let's take a look. We can go into our S parameter viewer here and take a look at the different ports here. Go in and filter by the different names. There's not many in this analysis. So I'm just going to select all these guys um, along with that guy. And we can show our through path. 
and see the different through paths and where we might have you know less ideal performance up at the higher frequencies here. We can also easily remove all these plots and then plot, say, our return loss, if we want to look at that real easily, better than 10 dB return loss, up to about 10 gig in this case. Anyways, there's a lot of insights you can grab uh, real quickly from the tool after you run your simulation. Um, but now that we've done that, let's take a look, a little closer look here now at the port configuration that we applied. For some of these connectors here, these are going to be ground signal ground connections with a end launch connector. So some could argue this is not the ideal way to port this out. Um, so what's also really cool in the tool is we can easily take this analysis, make a copy of it, go down, give it a new name if we like. In this case, I'm going to say Coplanar Waveguide Ports, if you will. Really just to give me an indication what was different, what I poured out differently in this case. Okay, so now let's take another look at some of these ports. Okay, so these ports in the center here don't really bother me so much. Um, we could ideally maybe add more negative terminals adjacent, um, but it's pretty good localized nearby ground. Um, these other ports we're referencing on the bottom, but we really kind of want to reference on the top, I'd argue, as we have the connector lugs uh, for the ground portion of the end launch connector meeting up to the metal here in most cases. So what I want to do is I'm just going to delete a few of these ports. Let's go ahead and um, highlight some of these ports on the edges of the board. And we'll go ahead and start getting rid of these guys. Not that one. That one and that one. Let me just go ahead and delete Get those guys out of the analysis for now. I'm going to add new virtual pins. So let's go ahead and create virtual pin. I do um, like to often connect, um, as I might expect, the contact to connect. We could put an area pin and all that, but we're just going to be a little sloppy here and say, OK, done. Let's drop another one down. Put one in here. I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And I'll put another one right over in here. Relatively the same location. Okay, so now that we have those pins, we can go ahead and use those to create a new port. So I'm going to take the positive pin, I'll drag it down into my port menu. And okay, we see that guy's come down. But what we're going to do is use these two guys as the ground returns. So we'll take these two guys and drag them down and place them on this port. Okay, so now if we take a look at this port, you can see how it's defined. There is a little offset here. It's not perfect. Um, I'd argue it doesn't really need to be perfect up to 20 gigahertz. Um, at higher frequencies, they might start to show some differences. Okay, so I'd gone offline for a minute, enjoy my coffee, and finish configuring these ports here. Um, you can see I've added these grounds in the grounds. A little sloppy again if the placement. You could be finer if you like. I've also gone in here and just added a few intelligent names for some of those more critical ports that I, I really care about in this analysis, which particularly these guys and heading back into the chip to these guys. Okay, so from here, um, we copied over our previous analysis setup, so there's really no need to go back in here, but you can see they're still set up for mesh domain optimization and Gen 2 meshing. Basically, we go ahead and hit Run. And a little over six minutes later, <clears throat> our simulation has completed. Okay, again, we can take a quick look, look at the results here if we like. Um, I've already highlighted the return loss. So you can see the return loss looks a bit better now uh, out to the higher frequencies. I, I knew um, this board worked a little bit better with proper port assignment. Anyways, so what would we want to do next? Well, we could go in here and create a sub-circuit. For simulation, I'm going to create a new cell view. I could copy it into the existing cell view as well, but I'm going to keep it separate. And what that does is it creates this um, this circuit here that connects the S parameter data to the ports. Now I have something I can use in my top level test bench. So I'm just going to go ahead and say S parameter test bench, and we can now go ahead in here and insert our extracted model. Um, I'm just showing you here. Okay, I went offline and wired this up. I downloaded the S parameters from the ADI website, cascaded them with the EM model. Now we can run a simulation and quickly see the gain, including the 
trace losses, the insertion, scalar loss of the traces, the S12, the return loss. Very uh, flat gain over a broad frequency range. Nice job, guys. Okay, as promised, I'd like to finish with some additional resources for you if you'd like to learn more about RF Pro. Please check out the links here. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Take care.